Well, hi everyone. Now, I want to talk to you guys today about IGBT gate drivers. Now, in the past, I've always recommended HCPL 3120 because it was an easy gate driver to set up and use. Most IGBT gate drivers are complicated, and this one was really easy, so I've always recommended it. However, it does have some limitations that I want to address today. As we can see here in the data sheet, it indicates that the HCPL 3120 is ideally suited for driving IGBTs with ratings up to 1200 volts and 100 amps. It goes on to say for IGBTs with higher ratings, it can be used to drive a discrete power stage which then drives the IGBT gate. So today I want to show you how to accomplish this, how we can use the HCPL 3120 to input to another gate driver which can drive IGBTs with higher ratings than 1200 volts and 100 amps. Okay, so before I show you how to wire anything, I want to introduce you to the IXDN630. Now, as you can read here, it can source and sync up to 30 amps, while the HCPL3120 can only do 2.5 amps peak, sync and source. So this gate driver is a lot more powerful, and it will allow us to drive the IGBTs with the higher current and voltage ratings. The issue with the IXDN630 is that it's not isolated. We'll have to use an input isolator first unless your application doesn't require isolation. Now just a few things to note about the IXDN630. The input voltage range, I want you to note, this is for the signal input, this is not the power input. We can swing it to minus five volts to three volts ab above VCC. Now the maximum input voltage rating for this is 35 volts. Ideally, I would recommend any anywhere between minus five volts and positive 17 volts going into the signal input. The supply voltage, as you'll note here, the absolute maximum is 40, but in this data sheet, they don't recommend going over 35. One last thing before we move on to the wiring diagram. If you need to see the data sheet, I have the address highlighted here, so you can go here. It's official from the website, and take a look at that there. Okay, here's my recommended setup for the IXDN 630. Now again, if you want to have isolation between your pulse output and the gate driver, you need to use HCPL3120 or an equivalent optical isolator. Now HCPL3120 of course needs a power input, no less than 13 volts. I wouldn't recommend any more than 17 volts. Now the output of HCPL3120 goes directly to the input of IXDN630. The data sheet will tell you the pinout for these. And of course the ground just goes to the ground. Now you'll note here we have two 15 volt DC power supplies, they're both isolated and they're in series and this will allow us to accomplish negative gate drive. It will hold the IGBT's gate at minus 15 volts when it's off, so that way the IGBT won't accidentally get triggered on when it isn't supposed to be. Two capacitors in series, highly recommended. That'll keep the power supply's voltage stable when the IGBT is switching. Now, the wire that you use to connect the two power supplies in series, that one will go directly to the IGBT emitter. Of course, the output of the IXDN goes through your gate resistor that you're going to use. Now keep in mind that IXDN 630 will do 30 amps, 30 amps peak, but it will only do 8 amps continuously. Keep that in mind when you're sizing your gate resistor. One more thing before we move on to the demonstration, I want you to take note, IXDN630 is ex an extremely fast gate driver. If you're having problems with turn off voltage spikes, I would not recommend using it until you get those resolved. You should also keep an eye on the IGBT's turn on current. Again, fast gate drivers tend to agitate this situation. Alright, now if you did want to have another look at that wiring diagram, of course you can always replay the video, or I have it hosted here on the server. Just follow this address and I'll leave a link in the description. Okay everyone, so this is the demonstration setup here that I wanted to show you. Now the Arduino board just out outputs a simple PWM signal. It goes into the HCPL3120 board and this board and that chip there is actually the IXDN630. So yeah, I kinda got this setup rigged just to show you this demonstration, of course, I wouldn't recommend actually implementing it this way. All the components should be on a common board. Now, these are the two power supplies that I'm using. These are the Pulse ML15, I believe they are. So those are isolated power supplies. They just output 15 volts, and I've got the two of them in series for negative gate drive. So one of them will send a 
15 volts on signal and the other one is going to send a 15 volts off signal. So 30 volts in total. Okay, so now this is a trace of the actual gate driver output. Now it's currently off right now, but I'd like you to notice where the trace is. Now right here, number one, that's actually zero volts right there. So as you can see, we're at minus 15 volts, so it's actually holding the IGBT off actively right now. So that's negative gate drive. So I'm going to turn it on now and start the pulse output. Now as you can see, the pulse actually ends right about here. So it's 15 volts positive here, and just within a few nanoseconds, wow, look at how fast that gets below zero volts. As I said, that's an extremely fast gate driver, and it gets into negative voltage territory very quickly and basically forces the IGBT to turn off as fast as it can. Now this is the IGBT's turn off voltage. Again, I want you to note the speed at which this turns off this IGBT. Now this IGBT is a CM300DY24. That, that is a 300 amp, 1200 volt IGBT and it has no problem turning it off very, very quickly. As you can see here, our time scale is 100 nanoseconds and just look at the sheer speed how fast it brings it up. Of course, as I said, you're going to have problems with voltage spikes if you don't have a very, very low inductance. Now, just in case any one of you was curious, we're only running from uh, the two 12 volt batteries there, and we're only running this light here. That's an incandescent lamp, so that's a resistive load, but of course, there is some inductance through the cables here. That's a 6,000 microfarad capacitor, and we have a little snubber there. So, even with the uh, measures that I've taken to try to reduce the inductance here as far as on the bus, that IGBT switching is still quite fast and it's going to excite any minuscule amount of inductance that there is in this circuit. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this one. I thank you guys for watching and of course the wiring diagram is at this link here and I'll leave that in the description so it'll be easier for you guys to get to. And of course if you have any comments uh, leave me a comment on YouTube. You can email me, send me a message, check out the website. I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.